Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape and I'm taking the character from an earlier tutorial, the caveman, with the improved capabilities of Inkscape. I would like to show you how to take him from there to something like this with more detail, more shading, smoother blurs and overall more depths. Before we do that, there's one main question you should ask yourself. Will I be able to see this additional detail? Because it's easy to add more and more detail into vector graphics that you can scale up to insane sizes on your big monitor, but will the art actually show it in the game? So for that, I took our high-res caveman and turned him into slightly smaller size, which is still pretty big for pixel standards. So he is now 28 pixels high. If I go further and say, okay, I'm reducing the color and have him with less colors to give him a more retro feel, then I'm losing more detail. If I go even further or further from 64 to 32 pixels, I have a really small character. How much detail will I actually see in that and is it worth spending the time? Let's start with the head as it is the most striking part of this character. So we're gonna add more detail to the eyes, give it some smoother shading, a shadow for the eyebrows. There's more detail in the hair, in the beard. The teeth and the nose get properly worked out we have shading and we have smooth highlights. Unlike previous tutorials, I'm not gonna create everything from scratch, seeing all the elements are already in place. I'm just going to separate them and work on the ones that are the most important. In this case, we start with the eyes and the eyebrows. Let's start by creating a clipping group. I take the darkest part of the eye and make that a clipping group. I copy all the other elements, cut and paste them into the group. The advantage of that is if I now blur the white of the eye, the blur does not go outside Let's duplicate the shape and turn black, update the opacity to something a little lower and use this as our shadow from the eyebrow to give the eye a little bit more depth. Next up, we add a little bit more detail to the eye. I'm adding more blurred circles with a slight gradient and a highlight for the white part of the eyeball. Rather than repeat the process, I just duplicate and mirror. One of my pet peeves when creating eyes this way is that people forget to move the highlight so it matches the other eye. So. There we go. And we have a more shaded eye. Let's compare it to the original, which was rather flat. We now have something that resembles a Pixar style eyeball. Let's continue with the eyebrows and we redefine their shape just a little bit, make them look more interesting. And the easiest way to do that is a tiny bit of detail. You don't need much. For the hair, I'm gonna create a simple shape, just four nodes that I'm gonna give the color of the eyebrow and make it a little lighter, remove the stroke, and then add a gradient to that. I can then go in and duplicate it and place it. You want to create variations in the angle and the size and add a darker color for the bottom of the eyebrows. After that, we go in and change the color 
of both eyebrows and tint them a little bit darker towards the bottom. Let's turn the other layers back on and see how the eyes work within the whole design. I added two deformed circles to indicate some eyelashes. Let's work on the nose next. I'm taking the base shape, blur it, duplicate it for more highlights, add nostrils or one nostril on that side, duplicate the highlights, add some more detail with just transparent little circles, add a little bit of a shading below the nose and a shadow that the nose will cast on the beard. Let's continue with the face. Again, blurring the shapes we already have in there. It's a matter of adjusting the colors. I prefer the multiply as it mixes with the background. I add small shading elements, blurred shapes that are set to multiply for the shadows or normal for the highlights. I add a shape to shade the left side of the face. I create a clip mask to put the shape inside to cover the edges. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the ear. I use a darker shape as a clip, put the lighter shape inside, add a colored shape and blur the existing elements, set the darker parts to multiply. Let's continue with the hair. It's lacking detail at the moment. So we're going to add a simple shape here. It'll be one of the versatile shapes to be used all over. I just adjust the colors to match. After that, it's a matter of duplicating, adjusting the size, the rotation. Variation is the key. I'm duplicating elements from the eyebrows as detail for the beard, adjust the shape of the beard a bit, add some darker parts to it and get more detail in the beard. Continuing to do the same thing for the hair, take the assistant elements, blur them and add new elements to it. A lot of the time it is duplicating elements we have created once, pretty much recycling as much as possible. Adding a few simple shapes usually does the trick. A little bit more variation, sometimes you need to do a new shape, but most of it is working with the existing shapes. Adding a gradient or adding a shape inside for shading or highlights. Let's do the mouse and then we pretty much have our face covered. I make the main shape a clip mask, put the teeth inside, modify them, add a little bit of a tongue, add some shape for the lips, a few highlights there, a little bit of variation, not to make it look too boring. And we are done. By blurring the existing shape, adding a little bit more shading, Working on the details, we managed to take the rather simple head of the initial caveman to another level with a lot more detail and very little effort. Even though I was planning to do the whole caveman in this tutorial, I will leave it with the head for now and the next part will follow soon. I hope you like this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel. Give me a like. Add a comment below and I will see you again soon.